and, you know, the build-up. Here's what he said. What we should have done is bought an answering machine that said, Hello, HR, no! Because <laughs> that's all, all you ever tell me. I promised him then and there that I would never again ever allow anyone in HR ever to say no to him. And we didn't. And we had five very happy years uh, together there. Near the end he got fed up though, because of course every time I told him yes, I told him the consequences of the yes. <laughs> And he had to reconsider his approach and his direction. This is Larry Prusak. Larry Prusak's a futures thinker. But I met him a couple of years ago and he told me a story which sunk into my head and, and has just about epitomised, I think, the problem that we have when we see the vision of outsourcing and we run away. When I worked in Surrey County Council, we used to call it absorb and neutralise. Any good idea, absorb and neutralise it. Never say no, but just never say yes works every time. Here's what Larry told me. He showed me these pictures and he said, Graham, what do those people have in common? Anybody know? Yeah? That's it. Every one of them somewhere claims to have invented electricity. Now actually, nobody can invent electricity because electricity was always there. But those, those three people had a major role in the invention of electricity. Here's what he told me. He said that in the, the turn of the last century, in the 1900s, every blue chip company in the United Kingdom had a director of electricity. Right? Have they any of them got them now? No. Why? Because we're not afraid just to turn the switch on. Okay? I live in Northern Ireland. I work in London. And my son and I have a tremendous relationship. My wife and I have a tremendous relationship. But... <laughs> <laughs> Phew. Got that in in time. <clears throat> My son and I have this excellent relationship where we do everything technically. He's brilliant. He, he's now um, 13. We started doing this when he was about seven. Um, but, but he um, scans his homework in and sends it over to me. We Skype. We see each other every night. I hear him doing his piano practice. Everything goes on great. But I'm sitting in the house and I get the signal. I turned on my computer, switched on the camera, put on the earpiece. Here's what he said to me. He said, Dad, what have you done to this computer? And I said, I haven't done anything. He says, the virtual memory is too low. I'm having to fix it. Okay? The next morning, I go into my office. I walk up to the desk. I press the button. Nothing happens. The computer doesn't turn on. And I think, I wonder if it's the virtual memory. <laughs> but I have a look at it, and I can't see it, so I pick up the number. Okay, it's double two, double three. It's the IT helpline. Hello. And I said, yes, it's Graham White here the director of HR, in the hope that it might get some influence. My computer is not working. What does he say to me? Are you sure you've turned it on? Does he think I'm stupid? I said, yes, I've turned it on. He says, okay, let me take you through some checks. So he takes me through checks. He says, now look at that. And he said, now go to the back of the machine. He says, and check that the power socket is pushed in. And I said, oh, okay, what a cheek. He says, he said, you'll know it's a power socket because it looks like the plug in your kettle at home. <laughs> okay? I walk round to the back. I am furious. Okay? I, I touch it anyway and it goes bzzzt and it comes on. <laughs> okay? My 13-year-old son will never have to ring the IT helpline. He's already fixing the virtual memory. Okay? We will not have directors of IT in 10 or 20 years' time, because our people will not be afraid of that technology. And we will not have big HR departments either, because our people will not need that level of support, because it's becoming more and more natural for them to play that part. Let me show you what the media thinks about HR. Again, my son did this for me. <laughs> 